Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome all of you to today's Gopher Solutions webinar. My name is Tabor Swatsky. For those of you who are new to our webinar series, this is a monthly webinar focusing on a variety of physical education subjects and topics. Some of our past webinar topics have included PE teachers presenting on specific activities like assessment and fitness. Some of our past presenters have included Dr. Robert Pangrazi, Dr. John Medina, and Jean Blades. Our presenters have done a great job of bringing topics and information that have been useful to the field of PE. Our webinars will almost always occur the third week of the month, and all attendees of today's webinar will receive a certificate of participation for one hour of educational credit. All attendees will be registered to win a set of six Rainbow Ultra Play utility balls that we will give away at the end of the webinar. Today's webinar is titled, A Future Where Physical Activity and Physical Education Are the Norm. Let's move active schools with Pam Powers. Uh, but before I introduce Pam, I wanted to mention that we will have the chance for questions during the presentation. Your questions are only visible to me, the moderator, so feel free to ask any questions you might have during the presentation. To ask a question on the right-hand side of your screen, you can type any questions you might have um, at any time during the webinar. We'll accumulate the questions throughout the presentation and we'll have a chance to get to as many of those questions with Pam at the end of the presentation. Today, I have the pleasure of introducing our presenter, Pam Powers. Pam holds a bachelor's degree in physical education and a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. She has an extensive dance background and has instructed students from early childhood through adults. Pam has been a certified fitness instructor and personal trainer for over 30 years. She is a NASPE Teacher of the Year and recipient of the Golden Apple Award for Teaching Excellence. Pam has presented at a wide range of conferences and in services for teachers across the United States at the local and national level. She taught physical education in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Pam is currently the Senior Manager for Physical Education and Physical Activity with Let's Move Active Schools. She is an exercise enthusiast and enjoys a variety of physical activities, including yoga, Zumba, TRX, walking, and jogging. At this time, I will turn it over to our presenter. Pam, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Tabor, and welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm very excited to have this opportunity to share with all of you today and, and get you excited about Let's Move Active Schools. Let's take a look at what we're going to talk about and discuss over the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, we're going to take a look at where we really see what has been going on in the U.S. and how we can really help to make this start to turn around. Also, how can Let's Move Active Schools help you either as an individual school, as a district, as a community, and then also really how can you go about getting this into motion and, and getting the ball rolling? So let's take a look at what we do know. Out of these 50 million students in the U.S., there's about 100,000 schools where the kids are attending and uh, learning and thriving. And what we also know is that they love to play. In fact, as adults, we love to play. Many of us are physical educators and we got into this field because we really found the joy in being active and moving. Well, kids are no different. And um, as Tabor mentioned before, Dr. Medina, in his book, uh, Brain Rules, he writes about how we are designed to move. We were, we were built and dropped on the earth to start moving right away. But what we do know is that in the U.S., we've got about 66% of our students that are inactive. And what we also know is that by the age of 15, American kids are 75% less active than they were at age nine, and that is really, really harmful. Since kids spend such a large amount of time with us at our schools, for example, when I taught in New Mexico, we had kids that would get dropped off at 7.30 in the morning, and they wouldn't leave until 6 p.m. at night. Uh, I'm sure many of you also know students such as this, but when you think about the number of hours they're with us, um, we have a lot more time that we're in contact with them. Uh, when they get, at, get to home, they might eat dinner, they might 
be up for a little while, but then they go right to bed. So if we want kids to be more physically active, we need to try to create this environment where schools are more active. And so this idea is that kids would be active and it would incorporate physical activity, including physical education, before, during, and after school that uh, accumulates up to 60 minutes a day. Now, you may ask, why the 60 minutes? Well, it's research-based. And what we've found through numerous studies now is that it helps to build a healthier child, mind, body, soul, they're better connected. And here's just a few of the things that we've discovered from that. Now, as you look at these statements here, we all know that, uh, especially administrators, principals, uh, they love to see these first two bullets, right? They love to see the, the kids doing better on tests. But they also like to see that, that children are at school. Um, many schools are funded based on how many kids are there and their attendance rates. But our classroom, our general education classroom teachers, love to see kids that are better and more attentive, as well as better behaved. In fact, there's classes that I've met and talked to, uh, one in, a, uh, for example, in Washington State, where they hadn't had a single student report to the principal's office all year after um, putting brain uh, energizers throughout the school day. Uh, and then as physical educators or specialists in health, you know, we love to see the lower rate of um, child obesity as well as uh, healthy habits because really in physical education, our goal is to teach kids this love of being active for a lifetime. And this is the bottom line. We know that when students are active, they're going to do better. So let's talk a little bit about the idea behind Let's Move Active Schools. Well, it's a national solution and it incorporates uh, this idea of ensuring that schools get the 60 minutes a day of physical activity and that this really becomes the norm in the school setting. This is part of the First Ladies Initiative, uh, which started back at an announcement in Chicago, Illinois. And at that point, Let's Move began. And there are a number of different pillars to Let's Move. Some of you may have heard of some of the others. For example, I've done quite a bit of work with Let's Move Cities, Towns, and Counties, which really has gotten involved in getting the whole community moving and uh, more aware of what's going on. Now, past the First Lady's uh, time in office, we have really become this collaborative initiative. And when I first started on the initiative, uh, when it began two and a half years ago, this slide was a lot smaller. There weren't so many, many partners, but as you can see, it has become this growing collaborative. Right now we have 30 different partners who all have come together to say, let's do what's best for kids. Let's help to get them moving and get them more active and turn around these different epidemics that we see now currently. So two things that Let's Move Active Schools helps, helps with a community, right? We, we give this opportunity for them to put this selection or these different opportunities of programs or different resources and the professional development and grant opportunities are all in one place for a school to find. And through that work, they've developed this uh, plan that is their very own. So we really look at this as two different ways we can support. Sometimes it can be an individual school who's, who has approached, or we've also worked with districts as a whole. Um, sometimes this has come from a district coordinator. Sometimes it happens from a community member, or maybe someone from the Department of Education or the Department of Health. And when we look at what they do or how they go through the process, it is individualized so that let's say that something that uh, may apply to one school, even within the same district, may not be the same things that are found for another school within that same district. So maybe one school finds through the assessment that they complete that they need more help with activities before and after school, where another may need more help with trying to uh, incorporate more physical activity during the school day. 
everything that we have within the initiative is all been vetted. And so it's, it's all based on best practices, standards, and uh, what would be considered um, the gold standard for what students should be doing in regard to physical education and physical activity. Any of the resources that, that educators look at within our, our uh, library are all, have all been vetted by a group of professionals who review the documents. And this is really what it comes down to. So as you look at this, this is a picture of comprehensive school physical activity. And this idea is that this idea of physical activity and physical education really encompasses everybody coming together within a school community. Now we put physical education in the red because, well, physical education needs to be the leader and it also needs to be quality. If physical education within a school is not quality, it's really hard to make those other four things happen. So for example, a quality physical education program in a school is going to have a licensed physical educator who leads the, the program. It's also going to be standards-based. They're going to use a scope and sequence. They're going to have a curriculum they follow. So all of those things are really important. The other four surrounding it really help to lift up and highlight and really garner the rest of that physical activity that we're looking for. So we're looking for physical activity to happen throughout the school day, right? We're asking general education classroom teachers to incorporate more of this. Making sure that the kids get recess, um, primarily in the elementary schools. Making sure that they have opportunities to move before and after school. And then also really getting the families and any community members near the school or in that school community really involved to help this out, as well as getting on board the staff. And oftentimes with staff, this also involves offering them physical activity so that they want to really pass on and instill this in their students as well. As I mentioned in the red, right, we have our physical educators, right? We really want to elevate this role because as physical educators and health educators, we've gone to school for this. We know what kids need to be doing and we can be the leader to really help guide it and support it within our school community. This also is important to realize the importance here of raising how much uh, physical activity can really impact academic performance. And there's some great documents to support this that we have available. Uh, the CDC put out a really fabulous document also about the connection between physical education, physical activity, and academic performance. And so if any of you are interested in that document, you can feel free to reach out to me or go to cdc.gov and take a look at it, but it's a really valuable resource for you to support this. So what we look at is that this is really looking at a shift, right? And as a physical educator or phys uh, um, health educator, you're really the champion. Now, does, this, does it mean that you have to be the physical educator or physical activity uh, person leader in the school to really make this happen? You don't, uh, there are opportunities here where somebody that, um, you know, would really be uh, someone who would move the needle to more physical activity could champion this as well. So let's take a look at what the website offers. This is the opening screen that you see. And up along the top, as you look across from left to right, these are different interactive buttons uh, that you can push and so forth. I've circled on the right-hand side the sign up button for you so you can see where you go in to either log in or sign up. Now one of the new pages we added was this really cool interactive map. So all you have to do to find your school is to put the zip code in. Once you put the zip code in, it will ask you uh, to find your school in the list. Now, there's quite a few schools, even within a zip code, so if you don't see your school on the first page, it's 
scroll down, there'll be a next button. And so sometimes you have to click that button to find it also. I really encourage you to use the zip code to search for a school rather than name because the names sometimes get a little bit tough to find. It's easier to find it by your zip code. Once you're in there, it's going to ask you if you want to be a team member or if you want to be a fan. And what this means is that team members are the ones that can fill out the questions. And I mentioned this briefly a little while ago. We'll go into it a little more in a minute. But there's 9 to 11 questions that you answer about your school's physical education and physical activity environment. And uh, team members are the ones who are able to answer the questions. If you choose fan, you aren't able to see the questions or answer them. So a fan is somebody that you might want to be part of this team. Um, you might want to do something like uh, have parents be a fan or you might want to have a community member be a fan. And so that really uh, help, is helpful um, in just supporting the cause, but it is someone you wouldn't necessarily want to change any answers. So this is a shot at uh, one of our schools called the Dev Shape School. It's uh, a sample school. And so as you look at this, what it's showing is that 100% of the questions have been answered. Down below the blue bar, you can see how many of the questions were meeting the guideline and then how many are not. So the next step in this would be to click activate your action plan. There are three different steps in the process. The first is to sign up and to do the assessment. The second step is that you click that action button to activate that action plan. And what it does when you hit that button is it will sort these different answers for you. So here is an example of all of the questions that are on the assessment and all the questions that have been answered. So it also weights your question. So each question that you see on here, see a gray or a blue, is a different weighted answer. So on this particular question, they've answered yes. This one is around using a curriculum, right, which we talked about before. And what I really like about the way the questions are designed, they're designed in the form of a rubric. So it breaks them down into four parts. So it isn't an absolute yes or no. Sometimes we have a gray area and we really need to have that opportunity to give a little more explanation. The other great thing about this part is that when you click on one of these four answers, it gives you statistics within your own state around what your state has answered as far as these questions through Let's Move Active Schools. I do want to uh, give you um, just a, a note about that. These questions are from the School Health Index that was developed by the, through the CDC. And so this is a, a gold standard in really looking at physical education and physical activity programs. So once you click that action button or activate my action plan, it sorts your questions. So any that were on the low end are up here at the top. These are the pieces that this school needs to work on. For example, it says this school needs to work on recess, uh, minutes for physical education, health-related fitness, and availability of activity breaks in the classroom. The rest of the items down here they're doing great, and this is where they really need to um, celebrate and be really uh, feel accomplished having done. The other great thing that happens on any one of those particular pieces that they needed to look at, for example, recess was one that they needed to work on. Online, it will sort out for them several resources that they feel will be the best to help guide this school to get where it needs to go. So when they look into the, uh, each of the questions or each of the uh, pieces that they've answered where they need help, they can look at into each of these, such as this is a document about recess for elementary school students. Uh, there's a piece in here from Peaceful Playgrounds about elementary recess. And so 
If you so desire, you can also go into the resource database and there's hundreds of resources. But the nice thing about this is this guides you to several that we think would really be helpful to that particular school in their particular situation. So let's talk about some of the different tools that we offer through this point once a school is going in to activate. The first is that we just started talking about with that action plan. But the other exciting ones are these grants. We have eight different grant opportunities that open and close at various times during the year. Some of them are running rolling grants that never close. We also have discounts that are offered through our partners. Remember those 30 partners I mentioned earlier? They really have stepped up to help support schools in all these different areas. Um, we also have the, the huge resource library I mentioned, and we're gonna talk more about the professional development coming up here, as well as uh, technical assistance, which we have a, a helpline that's available, and we also have a number of people who can be reached uh, within 24 hours to really help you through any questions or needs that you have. So here's the first about those discounts. Once a school has signed up and they complete their assessment, they will see this button pop up that says, congratulations, you now have the opportunity to receive discounts. This is one of the cool things here about Gopher. They're offering you a discount uh, simply by doing something so great for your school. They all want to celebrate and help you along the way to get to your next step. So it's really, it's, it's such a nice opportunity, and this is brand new this year in Let's Move Active Schools. The next one that started this year is called a progress incentive. How this works is there's four times during the year when we have prize drawings, and these have been donated by our various partners as well. And what happens is that, let's say you're working on that recess, Right? That was one of the questions that our sample school had scored low on. Well, when they go in there and they start to look at what they need to do or how they need to do it and what they need to work on, they have made strides, they implemented some new ideas, and they can click that they have completed that. Once they do that, your school's name goes into a drawing. So this is pretty cool because each step of the way, you can be working on a piece or working on a piece and be put into this, this drawing opportunity. I mentioned before about our different grant opportunities that come up. And this is a screenshot of all the different uh, groups that have offered or offering grants to Let's Move Back to Schools. Uh, the great one up here, Good Sports, up there on the right-hand corner, they offer equipment grants to schools. Uh, that just gives you an example, and it's a rolling grant. It's always open. And so you just go in, apply for the grant. Uh, right now, the USA Track and Field has a grant that's opened, and it closes uh, in February. So that's just a couple examples of what's going on right now. Now, I mentioned to you before, one of the things we offer as part of the initiative is professional development. Now, the things that we're offering through this collaborative are free. So let me give you an example of one of the pieces of professional development is when a school or a school district, in, in particular in this case, have assessed their school environment. We have a spreadsheet of all those schools together. We can take a look and see where their needs are. And then we reach out, contact the school community, and say, we can offer a professional development. These are half day, they're all day, uh, and they are based around those assessment questions that were answered, those, those uh, 11 questions on the uh, assessment. And so, depending on what they answer is what the professional development would look like. That is an in-person professional development opportunity. That's really kind of cool for the schools. We also have another type of professional development. And this one I've found really helps to get school communities moving in the right direction. So for example, let's say that there is a district out there who is really trying to get sign up and get engaged. 
And the physical activity leader learning system can come in and offer professional development. Now, in order for uh, the group to come in and do this, they must do the sign up and then they must also assess because that assessment work from the online tool is what they use in this professional development piece. Also, we have online on demand. And what this means is that when a school uh, looks at or sees what it is they need and what sort of help they might be needing, they can go and click on a number of uh, web videos. And at the end of it, they can even start and stop the video as they need to if they don't have time to watch the whole one at uh, one sitting. They can come back to it whenever they want and they get credit for the video at the end. They get sent a message saying that they've completed the work and that they've watched that video on that particular topic. So let's say your school is doing everything that they need to do. You've done the assessment, you've gone through, maybe you had to work on a piece, but then you go through and now's the chance to celebrate what you've been doing with the national award. And let me tell you a few things that are really great about the National Award. You get this really awesome banner. I mean, it's gigantic. And what we started doing this year, because it is a two-year award, we put the years that your school has won the award. Now, when you, I've talked a lot about districts, but when you apply for the award, each school applies for the award separate. You'll also get a certificate showing that you have become a Let's Move Active School. You get a letter that is uh, congratulating you that comes from First Lady Michelle Obama. And it's one of these opportunities for you to celebrate your success and how well you've done. So what we're looking for is you to climb on board and get ready to really help change this environment because you are the people who really make the difference. You make the difference in whether you are an administrator, whether you are um, physical education or a health education teacher. You are the people that can help move the needle to get kids more active throughout the day. So I've included the website here at the end. And if you need more information, we also have a help uh, phone number and also a help email that I mentioned. And I think that we did get some questions possibly through it. Yes. So I'm going to turn it back over to Tabor. Thanks, Pam. Um, great information on how to get on board with Let's Move. And we do have uh, just a reminder to our, our audience on the right hand side of your screen, feel free to type any questions you might have. Um, we've got a couple here to get started. One thing that um, a lot of people wonder about is, will this be available for uh, you know, future viewing if, if somebody wants to take it to their PE teachers as part of you know, a, uh, a monthly PE meeting or something like that within their school or their district. We do have these archived. All of our webinars are ar archived on our website, um, so we'll have it out there. And if you registered and attended, you will also get an email when that's available. Um, but Pam, first question, kind of a, um, a logistics question is about how do they log in on the main page of, of Let's Move? Um, are you familiar with that or is that something that, that maybe we need to do a little bit of, of research on? No, I can, I can talk about that absolutely. Okay. Uh, so if I go back to that particular slide that shows you the opening page, when you first open up Let's Move, you're going to see this opening screen, and it has the kids on the front, like this. Right. And so up in the right-hand corner here, there's a button that says Sign Up. Right. And when you click on that button, it takes you to this screen. Okay. So once you go into this screen, what ends up happening is that it actually will start to ask you to create a profile. I don't have that screen next. I have this. But this is the point when it would ask you for uh, your name and an email address, and then you create a, a password. Now, the important part about it is that you will get a confirmation back that says, 
um, you know, would you please tell us you're not a robot, right? <laughs> so it gives you the confirmation back, and you click, and you're in. Okay. And that's the that's the point where you can start doing the assessment. So that's a great question. Okay. And then once they've created that profile, if they come back and visit the site, they'll just log in with their their username and password that they've created. Yes. And your school name will show up up in the right hand corner here, and that's where you're well where you will see it. Now, if you are someone who oversees a number of schools, you can sign up to be on all the school teams. And the benefit for that is that as a, a school district coordinator or someone who's in charge of a group of schools, you can see whenever the school has done any work on their assessment because you'll be sent an email saying Dev Shape School has updated their assessment or activated their action plan or applied, you know, and get notification, which is really super. Sure. Okay. Great. Um, let's see, I don't know, I think the... Okay. I love the questions down in the box. Uh, yes, it is a dog. It's a very large puppy, so she <laughs> decided that in the middle of the webinar that she would let everybody know she's here. Um, <laughs> the, the other one on here, I love this, is a Karen uh, about New Jersey. Yeah. Love it. I love this 20 minutes recess. These are those little wins that are happening across the United States right now. And so hooray for all of you. Congratulations, because that is big. Yeah, and that was the one where um, it looks like, and for those of for our audience members who can't um, see this, uh, one, of our reg, one of our attendees uh, mentioned that in New Jersey, um, there's a bill passed that mandated 20 minutes of research, recess, unfortunately, um, Governor of New Jersey vetoed it, so um, they've still got a little bit of work to try to keep that moving along, but there's a lot of those sorts of things going on throughout the country. Um, yes, and in, in fact, so another that had recently happened was um, uh, Every Student Succeeds Act, right? That one kept getting uh, pushed back, pushed back, but then it just went at the right moment. So hang in there because, right. you know, little wins. Right, right. Well, Pam, I think that uh, the, the presentation was um, really comprehensive in how to get going with this and how to get started. So we really don't have um, really any other questions. Um, one, okay, one just came in here. How do you address the resistance from administration to increase activity time for students? Not sure if you've got some insight on that or not. I, I sure do. In fact, I see another about separating out the PAPE in Rhode Island also. Um, right before that Tabor. So oh, sure. let me let me address let me address this one here first. Um, okay. the, um, Kristen is talking about the struggle to separate PA and PE in Rhode Island. Absolutely. And um, one of the biggest fears, especially for us as physical educators, often is that there are there are physical activity programs that come in and they look all shiny and really awesome and our administrators go, why do I need to pay a PE teacher all this money? I could just have this physical activity leader person do this because right. all you're doing is running around with kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not true. That's where we go back to that picture of comprehensive school physical activity that I showed you, right? And the five different places where we get comprehensive school physical activity with physical education being in the red, it's that re, um, just a reminder of that we use quality physical educators, right? Licensed quality physical educators. And are we, are we following a curriculum? Are we following the national standards? Um, another great resource also would be for you to look on the Shape America site under um, advocacy because you're not alone in that with PEPA. Um, as far as resistance from administration, the here is, uh, there's a wonderful uh, slide on um, Hillman's study, if you have seen that. Uh, it, it gets cited a lot. This goes out, goes out towards Paige. Paige, um, if you want that slide, I'm happy to send it to you, but it shows um, a child or the brain, right, when they've been sitting for 20 minutes mm -hmm. as compared to walking and then doing a test. 
uh, there's tons of research and, and resources. Also the document I mentioned earlier by the CDC, there is another great document for you on why academics are, are so closely linked with physical education, physical activity, okay? So I'm happy to help you with any of those. Great. Um, it, uh, Alyssa, it automatically starts you out as a fan and it will, as soon as you are approved, you'll become a team member. Um, did you, it, my question to Alyssa is, if somebody else at the school is already signed up and you're just joining as another team member, you'll get an uh, approval from either them or you'll get one that comes back around and is generated through Let's Move Active Schools. In particular, if you, that other person is no longer at your school. Okay, I think you're seeing a couple of questions that I'm not seeing on here. So if there's any other ones oh. that you wanna go ahead and address, <laughs> go for it. Okay, all right. So um, I, I hope I don't say your name wrong. I'm sorry, is it Magara? But this is awesome. She said, uh, or he said, I'm sorry, our school received the national recognition from Let's Move Active Schools this past year. Awesome. Do we need to submit again for future recognition? So the answer is that next, uh, so for this year, what you would wanna do is do the assessment, just kind of as a checkup, right? Do the 11 questions. And then in for the 2017, apply again, right? So every other year, it's a two year award. So congratulations again. I, I'm really excited for you. Um, there's one about uh, high school answer, involvement Chris. too, as far as is this geared toward the high school population? It is geared K through 12. And there are a number of resources. Of course, the resources and other opportunities um, uh, inside of our resource database are getting bigger to secondary because of supply and the demand for it. And so that's what's become really exciting in this last year. Uh, the other thing is, is that the grants that we have to offer, right? There's a number of them that uh, benefit any grade level. And so I think it's really important to look at those as far as really having people having um, a better respect and, and lifting up physical education at all the different grade levels. Right, okay. And what about intramurals? That was another question that followed up with the high school population question. Okay, if, uh, in regard to... Well, I think the um, question is, you know, the question is, could this be intramurals? And I think the question is wondering is, is there a way to involve intramurals in uh, some of the things that we're talking about here? Sure, yeah, you know where intramurals plays a really important part is that before and after school activity. And mm -hmm. so if your school is doing that really well, uh, that is something that counts towards that. And in, in fact, along with that, um, the other part of I was going to say about that is that if you're if you're at a middle school and your intramurals are really fabulous, I would love to, you to drop me a note <laughs> because we're always looking for people doing. I I have a request from other schools across the U.S. always looking for great intramurals. So um, if you're in the secondary level and you're doing it really well, you know, let me know because we'd love to celebrate it. Yeah, for sure. Well, at this time, we are going to um, announce our the winner um, of the Ultra Play pack of six playground balls. But before I do that, um, thank you so much, Pam. And I also wanted to remind everybody that our webinars typically take place the third week of every month. And we send out emails kind of announcing what our next topic is going to be. You'll also get your email with your certificate of participation if you're live on the webinar here. Um, our win winner is... Janet Wright from New York. She's a teacher at Pittsford School, so congratulations, Janet. And again, Pam, thank you so much for everything today. Um, great topic, and uh, audience, we appreciate the questions, and we appreciate you joining us today. We hope that, you, we hope that you'll join us again next month. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.